Welcome to the sequential entropy pooling bonus video using the Fortitude Tech Python package. This video was not planned to be a part of the playlist initially. It's a consequence of some of the questions that I received about entropy pooling after finalizing the playlist. So let's start by examining the questions. Uh, the first one I got was what is the purpose of entropy pooling? And uh, when I heard this for the first time, uh, I was quite surprised <laughs> because I've been working with the entropy pooling method for the past seven or eight years quite extensively. So to me, it can be quite hard to understand how it is for someone hearing about the method uh, for the first time. But basically, entropy pooling is a generalization of Bayesian updating where you have a prior a fully general Monte Carlo distribution and then you input views about the posterior uh, that will then give you uh, this uh, posterior probability distribution using the entropy pooling method. So in usual Bayesian updating you have a prior then you get some data and then you get the posterior. With entropy pooling it's actually much more flexible than that where you just input the views about the posterior distribution. Some people also like to say that it's a generalization of the black Litterman model without all the oversimplifying assumptions uh, with CAPM, uh, the normal distribution and the duct tape engineering uh, associated with the tau parameter. But I actually think that the entropy pooling is so much more than that, so it's, it's not really doing it justice uh, to call it a generalization of the black Litterman model. Uh, but if that's a way for you to understand it, you know, so be it. Um, another question I get is uh, why, why to use the method in a sequential way? Uh, the short answer to this question is just that it gives you better results. <laughs> so basically you can imagine that when we have the entropy pooling objective uh, we are trying to minimize it subject to some linear constraints. If you use it in a clever way sequentially then you are able to get a lower objective uh, value with the same uh, constraints. So that's obviously a better result. Uh, it also gives you some distributions that look more nice uh, compared to what you would think they would look in the real world. And this is an example that you have here on the right hand side. With entropy pooling there is a related number called the effective number of scenarios and we want this number to be as high as possible. I will leave you a link in the description where you can read about uh, what this quantity is and we will see it in the code uh, a bit later. But here you can see that we have implemented basically the same views on developed and emerging market equities using the original heuristic which just fixes parameters to the prior value when necessary and then using sequential entropy pooling that we recommend. Uh, and you can see here that we get a higher effective number of scenarios in this case which is significantly higher uh, which means that we have a lower relative entropy also. Uh, the thing is also that if you examine it visually then you will see that the distribution you get from the sequential processing looks nicer, looks something that is more credible in relation to being something from the real world. Uh, another question I get is that does this work uh, on uh, real world market data? <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is that I was actually working with real world market data and then using the original entropy pooling uh, heuristic. And, and that's how I saw that it had some issues and that's how I came up with the sequential processing that I would see would give me much better results. So from my perspective of course it works <laughs> on real world market data because that's how I discovered it. Uh, it's just the, the thing that with the open source package that we have right now, we are not able to just distribute real world market data. Uh, I don't even know if, if there exists a license uh, for doing something like that. Uh, if, if it does, then it's probably quite expensive. All right, so let's now uh, go back uh, to the code and examine this new bonus example. So as always, we start at the front page of the repository and then navigate to examples. And here you can see that I snuck in an example number two <laughs> extra, which is this sequential entropy pooling that we will be going through today. So this example is, is quite basic. Uh, it contains daily data for S&P 500 and stocks 50, where we will implement a view on the mean and the volatility. 
So first we just import the packages that we need uh, and then you can see here that we use Yahoo Finance to get the daily data uh, yeah, for these two uh, equity indices. Uh, we compute the daily returns and scale them by 100 so we have them in percent and then we uh, show you a kernel density estimate uh, of the historical distributions. And you should remember with these estimates that uh, they are quite nice looking because uh, some of the data is a bit smooth compared to how it actually looks. Um, next up, we implement some views. Uh, so the views that we specify in this case is that the expected return of stocks 50 should be the prior minus one um, standard deviation or one half standard deviation. <laughs> um, and then in relation to S&P 500, we, we say that the volatility should be 20% higher than the prior uh, volatility. So this is what we implement here uh, using the original heuristic. And uh, if you want to read more about the original heuristic, you can see the, the entropy pooling video before or uh, read the article where it's quite clearly explained uh, what, what the issues are. But basically here uh, you would see that we implement the views that the probabilities need, need to sum to one uh, and we fix the prior mean of uh, S&P 500 to implement the volatility view. This is how the original heuristic tells us that we should do it. Uh, and then we implement this uh, view for stocks 50 and then the volatility view for S&P 500. So here uh, we compute a posterior probability distribution for the original heuristic and its relative entropy and uh, relative effective number of scenarios. So here you can see that we have this number for the relative entropy and uh, yeah, this number for the relative <laughs> effective number of scenarios. So what we should see below, where we use a sequential way of processing um, the entropy pooling views, is that we will have a rel uh, lower relative entropy and a higher um, effective number of scenarios. Uh, here we just uh, print uh, the prior statistics so we can see what the mean and the volatility was initially and then we print here uh, the posterior stat uh, statistics just to see that we have actually implemented the views uh, correctly. We also plot some kernel density estimates of the prior and posterior distributions for two assets just to see how they have changed and uh, so we can see we, we get some extra mass here and some changes here also. All right, so next up, uh, we, we process it in a sequential way using the H1 heuristic. And you can read about it here uh, in this article or see the previous video. Uh, so here, uh, you can see we implement this C0 views uh, that I explained in the article. So basically what it means is that we start by only processing the mean views uh, that we have. Uh, so this is only the view on the stocks 50. Uh, and then we get an intermediate posterior uh, probability vector, which we call Q0. So here we can see that the stocks 50 mean view is satisfied, and we can see that there has also been a significant change in the mean of S&P 500. So then we update all the means, and then we use this uh, as the fixed value when we implement the volatility view for S&P 500. So this is what you see uh, in this case here. Um, so here we print uh, yeah, the final posterior distribution where you can see that both the stocks 50 mean view is satisfied and the S&P 500 volatility view is satisfied. But now you have this updated mean for S&P 500 instead of the prior. So when we then compute uh, the relative entropy and the effective number of scenarios for this sequential entropy pooling, you can see that the relative entropy is lower and uh, the effective number of scenarios is higher. So basically we got a better result uh, using uh, the views um, in a sequential way and on real world data. Finally, we uh, just uh, show you prior and posterior uh, distributions again and then you can see that some of these, um, yeah, uh, funny <laughs> looking looking aspects that we had before, they are no longer here. So basically distributions again look like something that you would see in the real world. Uh, and this is also what you get here for the stocks 50. Uh, finally there are some comments that in here that we have <laughs> implemented the sequential processing uh, and also the views in a handheld way. Uh, so of course if you are an institutional investor managing money 
then you should have a much nicer interface uh, to do all these things automatically for you so you don't make any mistakes. But this is something that is really, really, really hard to implement, so it's not something that we provide for free here in the open source package. All right, so this is the end of the, this video. And uh, as always, uh, if you like this package, if you like these videos, then I encourage you to show your appreciation by giving this repository a star and then I hope to see you in the next video.